when you look at uh, that, on the face of it, it indicates that uh, we have nine topics, okay? Nine topics in land transactions. This clearly implies that uh, by the time, by the end of next week, all those topics and their subtopics, they should be covered. So you sit and ask yourself, okay? When you look at those, literally, when you look at them, they say they are nine, but kind of nine, now one by one, okay? How are you standing? And are you, can you make it to the test of time when you appear in the world? Because you have no time to revise for all of us. That's the naked truth. Okay? One week to go. That is next week. Okay? Some of you are starting with land. Some of you are starting with corporate land. Some of you are starting with family. Some of you are starting with criminals. Whatever the case may be. So at this time, you ask yourself, okay? At this point of time, you ask yourself if the list of covered topics is out. Remember, it has 63 topics. On the 63 topics, how many do you know? Okay. Not so. Corporate and commercial, yet over Okay. The list you can look at and say can on Kasovola. It is land and family. But when you got land, if a question comes from topic one and they tell you differentiate between a bona fide purchaser for value and a bona fide purchase. Is it the same or something? Okay. They give you facts where someone has stayed on land and instructed for a period of a long years after the banning of the course of the constitution. What really is a right? After the banning of the course of the constitution, the constitution is back by the word. After the banning of the course of after the banning of the course of okay, does it operate after or before? Okay. <laughs> that person has no claim in the first part. And this falls under the word occupant, but that person can't be bona fide occupant. Yes. Okay. Yes, that, you can, that qualify to be advanced. Yes. Yes. Well aware. That person is the first person. Only now we should think between like, okay? For that person to claim advanced possession, we should think before the country goes up. So now, the challenge is we should think between like, okay? They will tell you a person for the owner of land. And this person is claiming he has been on land for that for a period of the road. Yes. This probably can tell this person has taken you to. How do you defend your client? Okay. What is the lifespan of bringing a civil suit in that? Yeah. Upon expire of the rope, yes, you have no. So mm -hmm. now we saw we wait. Mm -hmm. So now look at topic one. What is the first years in the first topic before we go through workshop two? So that tomorrow we we'll also get the second topic. Then that's the we go for the third topic. Okay, so that at least we can read the graph so that we make the data recap. Because the chart is follows that here. This is chart that you okay. Okay. We either crush them or they crush us. So now before we go to workshop two, 
I'm going through, when you look at, I'm going to be highlighting on things, but you realize that uh, I'm covering topic one. Okay? What we are doing with this is known as Okay? When you, the very first pro, provision of the law, when you are dealing with learning transactions, you're supposed to first appreciate this one called Article 26. The right of because land is property, so Article 26 gives you a right to own that land. Okay? Thank you. Gives you a right to own yes? yes? You are not clear as usual, my senior. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so you get it. Okay, we've said that uh, when you look at uh, the question we are dealing with, is known as land transactions. This implies that you, the owner of land, you have a right to deal with your land the way you deal it. So before you get to that point of dealing with your land the way you deal with it, first ask yourself what law gives me a right to own this? So the starting point in everything you have to understand is that Article 26 gives us the right to land, okay? Because land amounts to property. So if the constitution has given you a right to own this land, ask yourself, what do you own in this land? That's what we call interest, okay? So what do you own in land? In land, we have what we call interests okay we have two types of interests we have what we call legal and equitable interests okay i'm sure that is the first subtopic under topic one identifying of interests so when you are going to buy land you must ask yourself what interest am i intending to buy are you buying a legal interest or an equitable interest so at that very point Ask yourself what amounts to a legal interest and what things you look at and come to the conclusion that this person owns a legal interest. Aisha, what is a legal interest? Let's assume you are in Oros. They tell you, Ganso, give us for circumstances under which one may claim legal interest in land and chances are high you're starting with land transaction because you have n n mm. yes okay legal interest these are interests that are registered so ask yourself how does someone get a legal interest Okay, one upon full payment of purchase price from a person who has a legal interest. Mm -hmm. That's one. Then another one is title by possession, which you, I want you to differentiate. Someone under advanced possession doesn't amount to legal. You first shift from advance to title by possession. Mark that. Because advance possession, you have just an equitable because you are on this land uninterruptedly. So if you don't apply to court for title by possession, you will remain an equitable person. You will not be legal. Okay? We've said differentiate between title by possession and advance. Advance possession. You are on land, you've not yet gotten the legal interest. Once you feel like you've spent a lot of time, then you are at liberty to apply, you get a certificate of. Before you get a certificate of title, you are still an equitable owner. 
okay yes okay so we are looking at legal so far we've looked at two we've looked at title by possession then another one upon full payment aha uh -huh. then the third one okay cancer is saying by lease Not season. Eh? Okay, another one is transmission by letters of administration. You've seen titles which have administrators. That means an administrator can get legal interest. That's why administrators have a right to sell. Okay. Yes. Okay. Circumstances under which one may claim legal interest. Once you see the things we mentioned, those things can appear on a title as a registered owner. So what you should know, ask you under what circumstances can someone appear on the certificate of title as on the ownership page is sufficient. Okay, you get it. Then we have another category. Can a trustee appear on a certificate of title? Uh, so that is another category. If you are a trustee, you appear on a certificate of title. Okay? Because that means you can get registered. So that means when you are buying, first ascertain, am I buying from a person with a legal interest? or not okay so then after the legal interest at least is a tenure account yes yes it can fall in legal but uh, we appreciate it more in brutal the second phase but you can also put it there okay lease because the challenge is in a lease the title still exists okay okay yeah the, the, you can appear even on the title that's why you create your own but the mother title still remains there that's the challenge with the lease but it is you can also because if you go for a legal lease okay you can put it under legal interests okay yes if a trustee is registered with the title do you are the beneficiaries also registered no it's only the trustee it's only the trustee The, the, the letters of administration expire they have the yes okay so now fire that means we can renew if you have a justifiable reason for not having administered the estate okay you get it so once it expires you can renew yes okay so but you should have a justifiable reason to renew okay yes okay so how to get Mm. Because if you were to take a trustee, then the trustee we cannot transact to the land mm. without the percent of the ministry. So same applies to the C the land. So actually it's in its positions. Yeah, we agreed upon it that a lease also is a illegal interest. So now let's go to equitable interests. 
equitable interests. So remember, we are still looking at what you own in this land. Okay, can you deal with what you own in that land, or you cannot? So if you have a legal interest, you cut the bag. So now we want to see, okay, what things do we look at and say this person has an equitable interest? Uh huh? Pastor Jeff. Uh huh. What do you look at this person? Has? Yes. Examples of equitable interests. Just know equitable interests are not registered. They don't appear on the title. Okay? Okay? You don't appear yes. as owners. Okay? Some of them appear as encumbrances, but you don't appear here as registered. Your interest is there, it is covered somewhere, but you can't appear on the title as registered. Appropriate. Okay, we have customary ownership. Okay, look at Uganda. Kabaka ya ni chapa. What's fine? Okay, you get it. Well, that's why we call him Savataka. So all the land is his. Okay, so the rest we are equitable owners. That's what commonly known as Vivanja holders. Okay. Then another one, beneficiaries from the estate of a registered proprietor. Okay, some people say Tata Yagamba, Poledi Rabana, Vee, Tata Tafa. Why? You are a beneficiary, yes, you are entitled to enjoy, okay, from the estate of your father. But until, okay, and even if it dies, you may not appear anyway. Okay? Then another one. Another one. Part payment. Okay? Once you do part payment, the law is clear. We have seen case law that once you make part payment, you become an equitable owner. Okay? And the registered proprietor becomes a trustee until you make your final payment okay this person no longer has a right to resale it ceases okay mm -hmm. then another one huh? mortgage okay do mortgages qualify yes are mortgages equitable interests it's called a lien. You differentiate between a lien and an equitable interest. Yes? A lien, you get an attachment on the property because of something. So in mortgages, okay, that's why in mortgages you have what you call a guarantor, guarantee. Once I guarant you in a bank, I get a yen on your property. In case you fail to pay and I pay for you, I take the property. Because of that yen, you get it. So the same thing, once the bank gives you money, it gets a yen, a right, okay? An entitlement on your property. Okay? That's why you have a right to sue for trespass, but you first not file the bank. Okay? The bank can't sue for trespass because it's not in possession. Okay, they have a yen, so it's, it's, not, it's not an interest, it's a yen. Okay, so you should differentiate a yen. A yen is like an attachment, an entitlement on something. Okay, so then we have section, we have people under section 29 of the land act. Okay, under section 29, we have two things there. Uh huh. Okay. Section 29. Uh-huh. Hello, Mr. Thomas. Mm -hmm. What are the two? Yes? But you can mention them. May I trust you? <laughs> okay. So we have lawful occupant and then bona fide 
occupants. So ask yourself, what if you enter that panel, you find Madame Nyangoman, she tells you, deficient between lawful and then bona fide occupants. Can you stand on your two legs and say, Kamboche? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can so proceed. Okay. Okay. So the distinction is lawful. You enter with consent of the registered proprietor, and you know, the distinction is you can't be lawful where there is no registered proprietor. Everything works where there is someone on the title. You can't be a lawful occupant, which is someone is chivant. So literally, lawful occupant, you should have entered with the consent of a registered proprietor. Then bona fide occupant, this is the person who enters land and spends there a period of terror uninterruptedly with the registered proprietor, his or her agents. Okay. 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 So those are lawful all. Okay. When you look at uh, what we call lawful occupants, these are persons who enter. I'm going to use this example, but for having purposes. I'm not a politician whatsoever, and I subscribe to the ruling government. But I'm using this example for academic purposes. I repeat, I use this example for academic purposes. When we look at what we call a lawful occupant, okay? Section 29 means a person who entered land with the consent of the registered proprietor. When the NRA war happened in Wales, people got dismantled, okay? They lacked where to. So because Baganda said that they used to tell their friends, so these guys left in Wales, they came and occupied land in some other areas like Masaka, Gomba, Usujo. Okay, people that's why if you look at people from uh sides of Gomba and Biji, they come, they come from where basically. Why when the war came, these guys came to seek asylum from their relatives. So these guys were registered proprietors, so they told them Mujemo Bereko wa. That's why when you go in the villages, a lot of people don't, don't know why they are in some land, eh? okay? They were allowed by the registered because the world was no longer a comfort zone. So they came and occupied. So when they left, some people occupied the world, okay? You get it? So the world became a war zone, okay? Which people couldn't go, okay? So, and you know, life is funny. Where you get comfort, you forget to go back where you came from. So after these guys feeling comfortable in the new areas where they decided to resign, they left you well forever, okay? And after the NRA war, okay, we got the new government, which stabilized peace, okay? You get it, okay? So then we have a category of people known as advanced possessors. But these ones, when you look at the act, they are referred to as, we have lawful occupant and, uh -huh. okay? So the other name is bona fide. So a bona fide occupant is someone who entered land, okay? Before coming into force of the 1995 constitution for a period of how many years? 12 years. Uninterruptedly by the lawful 
In which year? In which year did the NRA were broke? I want you to count from 81 up to 1995. How many years are those? They are more than even zero. You they are around 15. Now you see that people who are in Uruguay, they left Uruguay and they came to Kampala. Well, knowing that in world we say Ah, uh -huh. so after the war, they were just took over where? How many people come from Ngoma? Ngoma Ruel. Toko yenyo. How many people come from Ngoma Ruel? Ninety percent of people from Ngoma. Okay, and are they soldiers? Okay. Ah, why? How did they come? You mean the origins of Ruero? Now you get how it happened. Now, after subsection one, okay, when they're defining adverse, they came to another category. People who were settled in certain places by the government. Okay. Now we have soldiers who came to overtake Kampala and the surrounding areas. Did they get in Ruero? They came to Kampala where? Those are not my words. Okay? People are here Korolo. So that explains why. Korolo is occupied by? I'm using that example for academic purposes. Okay? Now, you get it. Because me, I entirely associate with the law. Why? Their efforts to bring this government into power, they had to protect them. So if another government also comes into power, let them also find means of appreciating their, their people. Equity shall not suffer a wrong without. Equity aids the vigilant, but not. Let's go on. Uh -huh. From your explanations, it's as if bona fide vigilant and adverse possessors are the same. Do you have a direct provision in there that says advanced possession? Okay, how do you become an advanced possessor? You have advanced staying on this person's land. Okay, you get it. That's why some that's why some books call it advanced possession. Others become the word bona fide. Okay, so when, once we say bona fide. I entered your land in Wondaba. Okay. I started digging from here. So are you complaining that you've never seen me? So once I pass that stage, now I have advanced into an advanced process. After the 12 years have expired. Okay. And once the 12 years expire, you go for what you call certificate by possession. Now you become a lawful. We recognize you as a person with a legal interest. Ever occupied land after 1995. You can't claim. You can't claim. Exactly. Okay. It is title by possession. Okay. So now how we do get Okay, you get a certificate of title, but it's known as title by possession. Okay, that's yes, an application. So now, are we together? Okay, so now, after you've seen, okay, the types of interests you have, ask yourself, these interests can be owned in different tenures. Not so? These interests can be owned in different tenures. But before you go to the tenures, ask yourself, how can you protect those interests we've been talking about? Okay? How do you protect the interests we've talked about? Yes. How do you protect those interests? Okay? So we have two ways of protecting interests in land. One is by lodging a caveat. Okay? Is by lodging a caveat. So now you ask yourself if you enter Oros, okay, Vicent, and they tell you, give us 
many types of carpets you know. Huh? Or they said differentiate between section 20 and section 30 of the RRT. You survive that room or the room survives you. Okay? Mm. Mm. Pass of recent. What's the distinction between section 20 of the RTA and section 39? Those are types of caveats. Okay? When you read thoroughly well, we have almost, okay? How many types of caveats? There are like four or five. Okay? But ask yourself, Gomani Kome. Okay? People only know what the beneficiary caveat is. They only want to benefit from people's property. Okay? Yeah. So we are still waiting for the distinction. So we have a caveat under section 20. Okay? When they ask you to make a difference between section 20 and section 39, section 20 forbids bringing land under the operation of the RRTPA. What does that mean? That caveat only operates where you are converting customer to free. That's the caveat you lose. Okay? But it only works before 20. Okay? It only works before the title is issued. Once the title is issued, it has no effect. Then you close to section for freehold. That is the caveat you load under section 20. Okay? It forbids bringing land under the operation of the RTA. Remember the no RTA. Okay? Remember the RTA only deals with registered land. So you want to shift from customer rate, you enter the RTA by freehold. You say no, Netaka, their community. Okay, before the title has been issued. Okay, now 39, everyone knows 39 on so. Mm. It only works before a freehold title has been issued. Once it is issued, it's negative, it's useless. Okay, then section 39, those are finite demand. Okay. It forbids bringing the land under the RTA. Once they say convert customer to freehold, you lodge that covenant. So you don't lodge a beneficiary under. So the, the beneficiary covenant under section 39 operates on land which is already under the RTA. That is to say, a leasehold certificate of title, freehold. And my okay, section 139. Sorry, section 39. Okay, this is very clear. A beneficiary, any person who claims any interest in land may, with justifiable reasons, lodge a caveat forbidding registration, transferring, alienating, or anything whatsoever. Okay. Which section provides for powers of the registrar? That's an issue. Yes? Are we already section 170? Is it 70 or 170? Which caveat is under that, that section? We have a caveat there. So they can ask you, under what circumstances can a commissioner lodge a caveat, him or her? So, Okay, so and so we have a caveat under section 170, a caveat lodged by the commissioner land registration. Okay, 170 of the RT provides for different circumstances. Okay, yes, okay. Mm. Uh, which section? Okay, as she is getting us a section, let's give us the circumstances under which the commissioner may lodge a caveat. Okay, one where we realize that you failed to pay stamp duty. Okay, you can also 
when you have undervalued your property, we are protecting the government. We want our taxes. Okay? So you think, where will the government get money to pay us? Okay? Then, also, for minors. Okay? A minor. Okay? Yes, the commissioner takes it upon him or her so logic caveat then for example let's assume you have two children they are below seven years okay you get an accident with their mom but you have property okay so who we'll take care of that property so if the registrar deems it fit can logic caveat half of those those minors to protect their in what we call public okay in another one it depends okay when they have no money okay uh, so we have another caveat under section 161. Okay. Where someone makes an application to ratify the title where it has some errors. Okay. You can lodge a caveat under section 160, one of the RRT, so that they don't correct those errors. Reason they are justifiable. Okay. Because sometimes the, the change may be so fatal. When it was we have circumstances, someone made an application for consolidation of the type. Consolidation, it was the, the land was 300 acres, but it was subdivided. Imagine it had around uh, 60 new plots and all. The plots were occupied. So once they consolidate, you will see problems. So and those are changes. So under such circumstances, we can lodge a card that we set no changes. So now you sit and ask yourself, single in give us the different types of caveats. Why do I mean? <laughs> okay, so now we presume. You know you have your interest, you know how even to protect it. Okay. But ask yourself, this interest, okay, you are owning it under what type of tenure? So that takes us to what we call tenure systems. That was workshop one, your first workshop. Yes, and okay. Oh, Okay, the, the second one is by taking possession. Okay, this, we said there are two ways of protecting an interest. Yeah? The first one was by covet, another one by taking possession. Read the case of Katarkawi versus Katarim, what happened to them? Okay, we have a, another caveat under section 89. Okay. Eight, nine, four. Okay. So now you ask your section 89, subsection 4. Okay. That's what we call perfection of a security by a money lender other than a bank. Okay. Where? No. 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 Section eight. Yeah. 
Okay, so we shall harmonize on that. So now, okay, so what are the different tenuous? We need to look at the tenuous. We know this. We just read at 130, at 130, 7. At 137, it is clear, says, land belongs to the citizens of Uganda who shall own it in the following tenure systems. We know my, we know freehold, we know customary and lease. Okay? Those are things that we know. I'm very sure. Okay? Very sure. Okay? Now, after you looked at the tenures, how you, have, you own your land, you get it. You have, now you know that I have my, but I have an equitable interest. I have freehold, but I have a legal interest. Okay? So now you know where you are falling in that land nonstop. So, you know now the tenure you have, you know the type of interest you have in that, in that land. I know even how to protect your, your interest, okay? Now, what next? Yes. For example, yes, ma'am. Legal. Yes. Please, legal. Because it is yes, ma'am. Okay? So now, at that point, we know these tenures. But we have tenures that can be transformed into other tenures. So that takes us to what we call the process of conversion from one tenure to another. Okay? From one tenure to another. So we only have two tenure systems that can convert. We have customary and then leasehold. Okay? But they can, okay? My old doesn't change anywhere. Okay? A lease on mile doesn't change to freehold. Okay? You get it. A lease granted on mile doesn't change to freehold. Mile, yes, that is HT. What you mean? Hey, joking. Okay? So now, when you can enter Oros, mark this. They say, um, Rashid owns 500 acres of land. He inherited them from his late, late father. However, an investor, Kim Jun, wants to construct a factory making swimming pool equipment. He is interested in acquiring a loan from his home bank to take over this land. However, the challenge is Rashid's land is Customer, okay. Advise him. He needs money badly. He has been blocked for forty years. Okay. So how would you advise Russia? Now, what comes into your mind? Who wants to get this land? Okay. This guy is a foreigner, and now we start knowing that okay, a foreigner only takes lease. Now, Rashid's land is customary. Automatically, now you get, okay, they are asking for the process of conversion from customary to freehold. You know why? A lease is only granted from a freehold and mile. So now, if you don't think in orals, you can't pass. They can't tell that cancel take us to the procedure of converting from customary to lease. This is not a necessary school. Okay? Customer to freehold. They can't. They'll give you facts where someone wants to, to lease, but the land is customer. That's okay. They have to first change. Do? So later they're asking you, what is the procedure of converting customer to freehold? But if you, wait, you are waiting for such questions in Oros, you'll get disappointed. They are not there. Okay, the simplest question they can ask, they can say, 
educate us about a record. Okay? Educate us about a recorder. Okay? But because if you read the process of conversion from customary to freehold, automatically you need a recorder and his duties. So that means they're still playing around the same. If not, they'll tell you cancel. Differentiate between a recorder and the registrar. Still, there's one question. It is rotating around in the same area, but you have to think at what point does the registrar come in when we are getting a certificate of free sample issues. So at what point does the recorder come in when it, we are getting a customer? Because you can't get a freehold certificate without a customer. It is still, the question is rotating around the same area, but in different forms. So now we are looking at what we call the different tenures that can be converted. So we have only two tenures, that is customer and free. So now ask yourself, do you know the process of converting from customary to free one? Or you don't know. Okay. But under that, you should be able to appreciate how to obtain a customer certificate of title. Okay. Converting customary to freehold within that process, we have acquisition of a customer certificate of. Okay. Yes. What did you say that? I've got other section 20 does. Okay. Mm -hmm. Forbids bringing land under the operation of the RTDA. Okay. When you are converting from customer to freehold, we can't get using section 20. Okay. But it's convertible. It's convertible. But once they can't the process, you should come and show sufficient cause why it shouldn't cross. Okay. So now, let us look at the process of conversion from to freehold. It's under which section? Mm, you proceed. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So we together. So now, which note talks about conversion from customer to freehold? It's the land act. Okay. So for the process of acquisition of a customer certificate of title is under which section? Is it under section four of the Land Act? Okay, it's under section four, five, and uh, I think even six. Okay, but that process is very simple. Okay, yes, very simple. Okay, acquisition of customer certificate of title. Okay, then after we have to convert it to Hold. Those things are very simple. You see today, I saw uh, one. You make an app report, you obtain the application form from the area land committee. Okay? You obtain the application form to the area from the area land committee. You fill it and pay the necessary fees. Then you file your application. Then the next step will be issuing a notice by the area land committee. Okay. This notice should be published. Okay. In areas that are visible, not in, area, in the newspaper of wide circulation. Because why it's the area land, the area land committee has a small vicinity. That's why they put on the village notice board or the sub county notice board. Yes. Okay. If the land is in Kagugu, we shall go for the area land control of Kagugu. Okay. So now, after that, okay, then the area land committee shall visit locus. They shall visit locus to ascertain the exact boundary, acreage. Okay, the area land committee will visit. Okay, the locus one, they will do boundary opening. 
someone may ask now, this land has no mark stones. How do they do boundary opening? You've ever stayed in the village. You have what we call in Salo okay? And the so-called, you know, whatever the case may be, depending how civilized they are. Those are the boundaries. Now, after opening the boundaries, they also have to ascertain whether you are the rightful person occupying that land, okay? Because, you know, some people are funny. They may process the title just to make people suffocate. Okay? That's what happens in practice. Yes. That's why they issue a public notice so that they also attend. Okay? Then they also have to ascertain whether the land has no wrangles whatsoever. Okay? Then after that, the area land committee will make what we call the report. The report will include the findings from the meeting, not so. Then after making the report, the second step will be forwarding the report to the district land board for perusal and approval. Or recommendations. Okay? So once the, the district land board approves they forward it back to the gentleman, the fella known as a recorder. Okay? The Rendia Land Committee makes a report. Then they forward the report where? To the district land board. Once it is forwarded to the district land board, then the district land board shall confirm or vary. But once they vary, they vary with the reasons and recommendations. Yes. Okay. They, they, once they reject, you go back. Once they confirm, they will forward the report with an approval to the man of all seasons known as a recorder. Okay. Then the recorder will issue with what we call a customary certificate of title or ownership okay certificate of the recorder will issue with a certificate of a customer certificate of ownership okay once we'll say that the district board will confirm over if they confirm they will forward the report with an approval to the recorder. Okay. Then after that, the recorder will issue what we call a customer certificate of ownership. Okay. So now mark this. When you look at the process of converting from customer to freehold, it starts from that point. Once you, you have acquired a customer certificate of title, okay. That means you are the rightful owner of that. When you are reading the land act on how to convert from customary to freehold, they tell you if you have complied with the provisions of section this and this, you do not need to redo it. So what does that mean? Once they tell you the process of converting from customary to freehold, you start from where we started from in an exam in orals, okay? Because there is no shortcut. You start with what we've started with. Then you say, after obtaining a customer certificate of title, I will then proceed and apply the district land, land board, okay? The freehold certificate of title is applied for from the district land board, not the area land committee. That's the distinction. Okay. A freehold certificate is applied for from the district land board. Currently, President uh, His Excellency Yoweri de Kagutam Seven has been issuing out titles in certain villages and the free freehold certificate. Someone was asking about the land fund. The land fund does that process. Okay. They fund the process of conversion from customary to free hold, where the government intends to do that, okay? Ask the people of Chegewa, the beneficiaries from that, some people from Uruero, 
some people from Yandongo, uh, Karamoja, because those areas the government is really doing a good job there. People are learning the importance of a diet. Okay? As I see, okay. Once you get a customary certificate of title, then you get that title, you pick the application for reward, you attach that customary certificate of title, then you pay the necessary fees and apply to the district land board for issuance of a freehold certificate of title. Okay? So the same process is also under the Act. But at this point, I assure you this. What works for you is your head. Make use of your head than your boots. Because Mundawari, the head and the Holy Spirit will rescue you. Okay? Mark that. Okay? So, then we've looked at how you converted, okay, to your appropriate. So now, after you have converted, ask yourself, okay, how can I deal with my land? Okay? How can I deal with the land I have? That takes us to what we call structuring of land transactions. Structuring of land transactions. Okay, structuring of land transactions. So at that point, you must ask yourself, what are the different types of land transactions we have? Okay, structuring of land transactions. Okay, we just try issues in certificate, the certificate of title and mine. Okay, or you are customer, you have a Boba or playing up for free college, you go to the district. And the district, you just trust at the zone office, yeah. Because yes, that's why you find out. Record that if you are the committee. Okay, so now, are we together? So now, when you are starting with what called structuring of land transactions, the first thing you ask yourself is, what are the different types of land transactions? Each land transaction we had mentioned, it is an independent topic in your work. Okay? The first type of a land transaction is a sale transaction. That was your first workshop now. But before you, you go to that sale, whatever we've talked about above, you should have appreciated it, whether you like it or not. But some of you started with a sale. So you wanted to sell what you don't know what you don't even own, okay? So after sale, we have another transaction known as leases, licenses, and tenancies. Now you see the topics down, how they are coming, eh? You couldn't start those topics unless you understand what we've talked about, okay? Then after that, we have another topic known as mortgages. It is also another transaction, okay? We are listing what we call categories of land transactions that can be structured. Because now you know the, the land you own, what you own, okay? You want to deal with your land the way you deal fit. So ask yourself, what transactions can you enter into in regards to your land? So the first transaction we've looked at is a sale transaction. Then the second one is a lease, license, and tenancy transaction. Then the third one is a mortgage transaction. Okay. Then the fourth one is what we call transfer stroke registration transaction. What do you guys call fraud? Okay. Transfer stroke registration. Others call it the torrent system. Okay. Transfer stroke registration. Others call it fraud, others call it current system. So it depends how you captured it. So when you look at those, around those the classes we've been having one by one, okay? So now you get it how land should be flowing. So now, before you enter into all those transactions, there are things under the law 
that restrict you to enter into those transactions. These are what we call legal restrictions to land transactions. So let's first go for what we call legal restrictions to land transactions. Legal restrictions to land transactions. Okay, so all of these transactions we are seeing, there are things, they'll give you facts, I'm, I'm telling you this, in Oros. They'll give you facts when the facts have a legal restriction. You shall first solve the restriction, then you enter into the transaction. The first restriction, I, I think I should just give you sections, or you will be able to tell, because you've covered them this very week. Okay? The first one is under section 40 of the Land Act. The first restriction, the first restriction is under section 40 of the Land Act, is known as citizenship. Now you know, if they give you facts, your client is a non-citizen. First sort of the problem, okay? They will tell you your client wants to mild, mild, but is a non-citizen. No, very simple. Tell your client to register citizen company. Let him register the company here. I take him with Ugandans as the biggest shareholders. Then the company will buy my Why? It is a legal restriction. So you can't sell to a non citizen. Mile of free hold. So you see, it is stopping you from entering into that. Trans and that's how they also structure your number one in land in the final exam. Okay. Then another one is tenure itself. Okay. Yeah, that one we shall get when we are doing deep in that. But okay, we shall get there. Okay. So another one is okay, tenure. We have some tenures you can't just deal with. For example, when you look at section 101 of the of the RTA, can you enter into a lease transaction on customer land? You see, it is restricting you to enter into a transaction because the tenure does not allow. So once they give you first when it's customer, first sort of the restriction, convert it to the required tenure to proceed. Okay, once you understand the legal restrictions, I assure you, you will not so like well unless once you appreciate how to deal with the legal restrictions, I assure you, you never fail your land transactions. Yes, yes, okay, okay, what cause what, what's not clear? Okay, we've said. We have so far we looked at how many restrictions? Two. The first one was citizenship. We said that we have some tenures that are not owned by Ugandans. Okay? A, a non Ugandan can't go for freehold and so you see how it's going to be hindering you to enter into the, the transaction. So if sort of that, how? Tell your client make a company. Let the company be a citizen company. Problem sort of let them buy mine. Okay. Then the second one we said is tenure. Okay. We have some tenures that do not allow certain transactions. For example, the transaction of lease can't take place on customer tenure. So you want a lease, it's a transaction you want to enter into, but you have customer tenure. But when you read section 101, it says any proprietor of freehold or mine you see that other tenures are cut off so it becomes a restriction 101 of the rta so it becomes a restriction you can't okay then another restriction is ownership ownership so ask yourself how is ownership a restriction of land transactions have you ever heard of what called the name of that tool you sell what belongs to you, okay? You sell what belongs. So they will give you facts where Anita 
is broke. Because of the excitement of her firstborn, she registered the land in the names of the firstborn. So now the owner of land is a miner. The miner can't contract. She wants to sell to Vincent. She needs money urgently. So the, the restriction to that transaction is ownership. Because the owner of the land cannot enter into a transaction. So how do you solve that? You go for a guardianship order in respect of that. Okay? We've said ownership. They will give you facts one. They can give you where the owner is a, is a minor, where the owner is out of the country but wants to sell. If not, where the owner is suffering from a mental illness. Okay? Out of so you should be knowing the theory how to solve that problem. If the owner is a minor, we go for guardianship. If a minor is out of the country, that is a, the owner, the registered owner, and is the one who wants to sell, but is outside the country. We we'll go for power stop. Okay. Then if the owner is a person suffering from a mental illness, we go for we go for an application to manage the estate of a person suffering from a mental illness. That one is study term work basically, but you should know it, okay? Because you know, under the law of contract, a minor has no capacity to contract in certain circumstances. A person suffering from a mental illness has no capacity to contract in certain circumstances. Now you have a transaction, the transaction is due, but uh, Okay, so if the person is suffering from a mental illness, you just go and make an application for, okay, not letters of administration branch, management of the estate of a person suffering from a mental illness, okay, then also, but that one is that time, let me they can give you facts where the, the owner of land died, but the title is still in the names of the deceased. But you want to say, how, how do you deal with that? Obtaining letters of administration. Hey, that is land. Now you see, all those are legal restrictions. Okay? That was my second question on legal restrictions in, in land. Oros. The first one was from mortgages. The second one was on legal restrictions. The third one was distinction between district land board and Uganda Land Commission. Those are the three questions I did in land. Name board chat. Okay. Hey. So now, the, another legal restriction, okay, is under section 38 of the Land Act. Section 38 of the Land Act. Is known as is known as security of occupancy under section 39, 38, sorry. Okay. 39 is security of occupancy. Security of 38, sorry. 38 why is distinctive because it has a broader meaning of family land. Because under family land. When I was answering that question, I remember Ansobania told me, under what circumstances can consent of children be required? In the same line with your answer, I started dozing immediately. Okay? Where it is customary land. Okay? Yeah, the fact that was by then. Okay? So now you get it. Okay? Then another restriction is under section 39. Security of occupancy. Okay. Used with spouses and other family members to have beneficiaries from that from that property. You can't just sell. Okay? You can't just sell. You need consent because if it is family land and it is under customary tenure, 
not only the spouse, but also the children. And where the children are minors, because they are many minors, you could see consent from the district work. <laughs> okay, but those things are in the law, not in the practice. Okay? Then we have another restriction under section five of the mortgage act. Okay, 39. You can read it in conjunction with five, section five of the mortgage act, what we call a spousal consent. Okay. Section 39, okay, of the land act, you read it hand in hand with section five of the mortgage act. It is another restriction known as spousal consent. Everyone now is really for Daka. You want to say. You want to enter into a transaction, but you still have all those challenges. Okay? Yes? We've said 39. 39. 39. Yeah. Okay? So now, you see, so now, before you enter into the transactions we are going to see, Everything we've talked about should be in your head. Okay? And that was first term, first week. Okay? That was first term, first week. Okay? So you ask yourself, that means we've done a recap of first term. Okay? <laughs> okay? So you see? So, you ask yourself, okay? That has been, so when you look at top one, what we've left out is what we call structuring a cell transaction, okay? So that means we shall start from there and we structure a cell transaction. We see how we draft a cell agreement. We draft a cell agreement. Okay? They tell you, how do we perform? Performance of a sale, agreement of land. So performance in land, okay? Not knowing that this side performs by paying the purchase price, this side performs by giving back at possession and transfer forms. Then they change as cancel. Assume you entered into a sale transaction. You paid full purchase price and you are in possession, but the vendor has refused to deliver. Transfer forms, okay, has deliberately refused. So that, that's what we call remedies in land in a sale transaction. Okay, we shall get there tomorrow. Okay, don't worry. Okay, <laughs> we shall get there. Okay, but now you see, you sit and ask yourself under those topics, they are listed. I've not looked at them, but I've been going in order line by line. I know it's there, line by line of topic one, and I know we have stopped. Now you ask yourself, okay? The rest of the topics, then look through them in your room. You ask yourself questions, whether those subtopics, once something comes out, they tell you cancel, take us through the Lord's Act, okay? How can someone acquire an access room, proceed? No. Okay. They tell us, ah, educate us on compulsory land acquisition. <laughs> so all those are so that means from tomorrow we shall be looking at what we call land transactions. We shall start with a sale. We do compulsory land acquisition. We do access roads, mortgages we've covered. We do leases, and then we call it. Oros. Okay. <laughs> Here you shouldn't forget. So now, when you look at uh, what I show you, okay, hey, I said we are changing. We are approaching Oros. So let's now shift to our show. Okay. Okay. Oh. Is there any question on workshop one? Before I go to workshop one, 
up to 1 2 a.m. Then hey. they just as up to up to two. People were not sleeping in the auditorium in that main hall. Okay. I can't get so any question, members online, any question in workshop one before you cross workshop two? Yes, that's here from this case. Okay. Oh, we are good to go. Answer Rafael. Yes. Uh, explain to us what tacking is because we are afraid to come on now. On, a, on an amicable settlement with our colleagues. Okay. okay. Castle has an issue with Jackie. That is one. Another one. Yeah, That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Hold on, Castle. That's all right. Uh huh. I need section 19. Uh huh. Yes, Castle Gladys and Castle Ruth. Uh, Castle Rashid. Kindly. Yes. How fast on the applicability of money lenders and the mortgage act, how they work hand in hand. Okay. Mine is on what? When 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 two people like married married couple are registered, their names are registered on the land. Do they require their their consent when you want to when you're dealing with that land? Or you want to sell or you want to mortgage. The land is registered in their names, both of them. Okay. Now, let me also first ask. I'm, I'm picking random. Okay? I'm picking random. If you had a part in your workshop which says that the part has agreed to enter into a trial, agreement okay with the company and the owners of the property that's that's what that would be so which agreement which transaction did you do as you and you pay me don't talk on behalf of the farm. Mm -hmm. The workshop one, that's what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And so, Council Master, uh -huh. how did you solve that? Okay. Council Master, how? How do they draft the third department? That's what actually I'm asking. How would we draft the third party mortgage? So you think between lines, how would we draft the third party mortgage? Okay. Council, how would we how would we enter into a mortgage transaction? Mm. Yes, you read the section three. How do we enter into a mortgage transaction? Council Rashid. Yes. We today in yes. our PA guide, our PA today guided us on drafting the mortgage, the uh, the third party mortgage. He said mm -hmm. that uh, it is prudent if we also include the borrower. Mm. He said that on that mortgage, did uh, they said it is prudent we include the borrower as well, and he's, he confirmed that on the loan agreement. The mortgage should appear as a guarantor. That is fine. So when we asked him about uh, the borrower be, uh, also being a party to the mortgage deed, he said it is prudent practice that we include the borrower as well on 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 the mortgage deed. So it becomes the bank the the mortgage. Okay. Now, Castle. I, I appreciate, but I want you to read the law, okay? Uh, so listen, I want you to read the law as you independently, you say that according to section three, okay? This is what I do. As you, and in the, because in the practice, the very PA, Ojakumusanga, Akube, position the Yakuwa, Akube, because they make research. They do read. 
that I'm very sure. But as you an individual, did you read the law? If you meet me in practice and it was a study property mortgage, can you protect your client? The way can I protect mine? That's what you should ask yourself. Okay? Because the money is in mortgages, I'm telling you. Money is in banks. Banks don't know what they're doing. They need advice every now and then. Okay? Yes. Yeah. So now for me, like, uh, the old man up now. Me, I, 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 I thought, according to when I read the case of Kuma, mm. they said, they said, that part that I read, they said, um, uh, the, the what? The mortgage will not be a party to the loan agreement. That's what I mean. Mm. Now, from what I picked from that, it means that there will be, for me, I thought like there will be a loan agreement mm. and then there will be a mortgage deed. That is one position. Okay? Now, first ask yourself, answer this in, what is a third party mortgage? According to the law, not according to you, or according to the PA, according to the law. No. I don't mean according. I'm not there. Okay? How does the interpretation section define a third party mortgage? Because that's the Big, one of the biggest contentions in action of one. That one, tacking and priority. Those are the problems in action of one. But the rest is a walk off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is created mm -hmm. to secure payment of a future contingent. Mm -hmm. For a person who is not, who is not a mortgage, uh -huh. you underline who is not a mortgage. What does that mean? This money you are getting, that contingent money they are talking about, that money doesn't go to them. It goes to the third. Now listen, who is a mortgage? Bola. I want the law. Read the act. Who is a mortgage? Uh huh. Who an interested man? Uh huh. Okay. A minute, you stop there. Means a person who has mortgaged. So now, how do we enter into a mortgage transaction? Go to section three. Yes. How do we enter into a mortgage transaction? Uh huh. A person holding land under any form. Of land anyone, yes, made by instrument. Stop there. A person holding land under any tenure made by instrument. So that means there is an instrument we use to mortgage property. But who should that be on that property? That's instrument. So as a company owning any property, I'm not disputing the position of any people. We read the law to harmonize. Okay, now you get it. So on the mortgage deed, you draft it. As per the provisions of the law, who should appear there? It is mortgage and mortgage. Some the position is settled now. Okay, so that means in a no, third party mortgage, we have council What you should note in a third party mortgage, we have three relationships. We have a relationship of a mortgagee and mortgagee. It is between the bank and them and the person who has security. Okay, mortgagee and mortgagee. Then we have lender borrower between the bank and the person who is taking money. Then we have guarantor guarantee. Who is the guarantor here? Okay. So the mortgagee becomes a guarantor on the loan agreement. So those are the three relationships in a third party mortgage. So when you are reading, sit and read that case of Guma Paulino. Me and my oros, the first question that I was asked, Rashid, give us three circumstances. They said, uh, give us circumstances 
where someone without property can access a loan facility. They, they take circumstances. That means they are more than one. So me, I came, okay, I can, I can get powers. I gave them one by powers of, then it took third party. Okay. Mm-hmm. On, on the on the mortgage deed, which has a mortgage and a mortgage. On it. Mm. Okay, it was the bank and Kashanko and his wife on the mortgage deed. Then on the loan agreement, it was Kashanko Enterprises and the bank. Then Kashyanko and the wife had to sign on the loan agreement as guarantors. That's how you could perfect that transaction. How would you serve the needs in case of default? In case of default, mm-hmm. the mortgage. Because the mortgage, let me tell you, that transaction is funny. Okay. Yes. Does the act talk about serving another person other than a mortgage? Read the law. A company is distinct. So a company is distinct from its shareholders and members. Okay, a company is different. It sells assets. Okay. Uh, yes, Council Emmanuel. Council, please get clear network. We will read the law. Council, get clear network. Your, your network isn't clear. Hello, Council. Yes. Yes, that's okay. okay. Can, can you? And so you net type in the type in the chat room. We shall read the question. Okay. So then they told me there is a problem when it comes to section 19. How many notices are in section 19? So why should we do this? Can someone kindly unmute to say something? Okay. Can someone? Council Monge Arafat, how many notices are in section 19? And how would you reach to those notices? Hello? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, I haven't uh, well, uh, I'm not yet grounded on that section, but I uh, realized that when I went through some remedies, the remedy is available to uh, the mortgage where there is default, uh, there is one of 15 working days, uh, there is another one of uh, 20, was it 21? Then there is also another one of five working days. Okay, let's read this section together. Okay, okay. for the last time. Okay, section 19. When I read section 19, first, you saw. At what point do we consider someone to have the challenge we have? We have the normal practice of banking. Leave that normal practice aside, okay? And come to the law. That's the first distinction. <coughs> Why? In a practice, what exactly happens? When you are supposed to pay your loan on the 30th day of, of each month, Okay, once you don't pay on the 30th day, the bank presumes you have. That is the practice. But when it comes to the law and reading, the position is different. So, first ascertain whether there was. So, when you read section 19, subsection 1, okay, section 19, subsection 1 says, Where money secured by a mortgage under this act is made payable on demand. First ask yourself, at what point will this money become payable on demand? 
Once you don't pay on the day upgrading really account in the mortgage fee that you don't upgrade, the money has become payable on Mufunze or Fusewa Ubikiza. You get it? So we have to first remind you that, oh, you sit down, you were supposed to pay on the 30th day. You have not paid. Please do something. You get it? So now, once we we we, we, we remind you and you don't comply, you, you will have uh -huh. So that's what we call money payable or demand. Muganda gama wawola or to pay. So this guy came sweet talking us, begging for money. Okay. So at this point, he's behaving adamantly. That like he doesn't remember. So remind him by sending him what? A demand notice. So the first notice is called a demand notice. When you look at this act, does a demand notice have time frame? Now cancel. Now, yeah. now cancel. Mm. This person you have reminded him that he's supposed to pay. Mm. There and then it is when it becomes a demand notice. Okay. You are why this demand notice is demanding him to pay what he's supposed to pay. You have reminded me to get uh -huh. what I was supposed to pay yesterday. Yes. Does the demand it notice depends. they give you time within which to comply? So the unfortunately, the law doesn't give time on a demand notice. Why? Remember, they always give you time like over a month. Actually, you don't it doesn't why? Because at the end of that month, you're also supposed to pay. So they tell you before that maybe around the tentative when the payment is on the thirties of the second month so that will take a uh -huh. so now they have the they are at liberty to specify any time in the demand notice so once we give you a demand notice and we say make your loan payment not exceeding two weeks and the two weeks expire you will have now let's switch section 90 subsection 4. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, let me read for benefit of this guest online. It says, a mortgagee will be deemed to be in default warranting the mortgagee to serve him, to serve upon him or her a notice in writing of a default requiring the mortgagee to ratify the default within the prescribed number of days stated in subsection now you get it. So once you don't comply with a demand notice, we send you a second notice, which is known as a default. This notice is under what section? Section 19, subsection 2. Subsection 2. Not in, in subsection 4, there is no notice. They are explaining circumstances under which, okay? You should come, you sh they should give you a default notice. Okay? We are going to read and get it there. Okay? Saying that um, stated in subsection 2, if the mortgager fails to meet any obligation to pay the principal sum on demand, or, now they are using the word on demand. Okay? You, you are saying if, if you fail to meet the obligation in the demand notice, you get it in the demand notice so that means the demand notice may demand to pay the principal sum and the interest okay or any other periodic payment or any part of it in order or it under the mortgage after the period of 30 days from the date when the obligation to pay becomes due you get it so what does this mean that the demand notice okay they give you the first demand notice Within it, literally, they're saying you should be given 30 days to make your payment on the demand notice. Literally, you get it. Okay, so now, once you don't pay within 30 days, because the demand becomes due when a demand notice has been given to you. So, section four explains the time frames under the demand notice, not under the default notice. You get it. Then after section, subsection four, 
refers to the time frame specified in subsection, then you come and read subsection. Okay, it says where a mortgager is in default. Of remember now, when does the default come in? When you've not complied with the demand. So where the mortgager is in default of any obligation to pay the principal sum on demand, okay, or interest or any other periodic payment of any part of it due under any mortgage or in fulfillment of any covenant or condition expressed or implied in any mortgage, the mortgagee may serve on the mortgagee a notice in writing of default and require the mortgagee to ratify the default within 45 working. So what does this mean? A default notice has a lifespan of 45 days. Okay, so how many notices are in section 9? So the notice they're referring to in subsection two, it has a specifying format. It has contents. So ask you so, what are the contents of the of the default notice? What are the contents of a default notice? You come and read subsection three. It gives you the contents of a default notice. It says the notice required in subsection two shall be in a prescribed form and shall adequately inform the mortgagee of the following terms. So what does that mean? Whatever is under subsection 3 are contents of a default. It's not an independent notice. You get it? So when you open the mortgage regulations, they give you a copy of a default notice. So from that, how many notices are in section 19? OK? Council Mwongi. Are we together now? Y yes, thank you so much. Now, you see, eh? just the way we read the act, take it slow, okay? Take it slow, okay? I just sound like we are on okay. section now, okay? Yes, so now let's look at someone had issues with tacky. Let's look at section 10, <laughs> okay? But when you are reading section 10, Make sure immediately after section 10, you read section 9. Make sure after reading section 10, you read 9. Why? The law of tacking, basically, even before you read the act, tacking, this happens where you use one security to obtain different loans, either from the same bank or from different. But the rule is, you can't do tacking unless it is inclusive in your mortgage deeds. That's why they told you to draft a mortgage deed and explain. But I saw people who drafted uh, on the heading here, they said mortgage deed, open brackets, tacking explained. Jesus. <laughs> Not knowing that, down under the, the, the okay, it should be a close. So for them, they put up here, tacking explained as they say. Ah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is case law. So now, but uh, now down. Can't rush it. Did put that close again. Can't rush it. Yes. Okay, so when you are drafting, okay, you have to, you should have read section A before you start drafting and explaining the law of that. Okay, so let's read section 10 together. Council Daniel, let's first read section 10. Okay, section 10 says. Tacking. A mortgagee may subject to this section make provisions in the mortgage instrument to give further advances or to give credit to the mortgager on a current or continuing account okay what does this mean you have one title but you are able to access numerous let's assume you took a loan of 48 when you reach when you paid up to allow half you top up another another loan without going through other commodities. 
But that should be inclusive in the now, there is a colleague of mine I escorted to Prime. Okay, this person get, got a loan. Then the loan officer was telling this person that you know what? If you pay up to around 50%, I can persuade the manager, I will give you another loan. By that time, it seems I had issues with the loan. Okay, I hadn't understood how things are planned. Now, after some time, it's been possession of these documents. Now, after reading, after, after I'd come to this and I read about that, so I went back and read the argument these guys had. It wasn't there. Now, how was this madam trying to convince this person? And once you make that advance, it is null and void. If I don't pay, you can't. Because the law is clear, it is clear. And the law is clear. You are bound by your agreement. So the law is clear. Once we enter into an agreement, it is binding. So if we didn't have, if we don't have when you get that second loan and it was not inserted in the you default, you they, they take you to court. You see if it was it is acceptable. But the challenge is banks keep on doing mistakes because we don't know and we feel happy. Okay, you get it. So when you look at that section, okay, it is very clear. Okay, that so now it says that um, a further advance referred to in subsection one shall not track in priority to any subsequent mortgage unless what does this mean? If I have the first loan and I get the second loan, the second loan cannot be. Cannot be taken the first period. Out there, how this how it happens in practice? When you get money from Bank A, Uganda Limited, okay, and you get a problem of money that exceeds the money you got from Bank A, and you have paid some, you can approach Bank B using the same security as the tacking in the practice. But this one is not there, okay. So what bank? B does they negotiate with bank A. Okay, then because of the subsection two, that the second advance can't rank in priority. Okay, what does that mean? That if I'm I default and they are selling my property, bank B cannot pay itself before bank A. You get it? So because this this provision has the word shall, what banks do they say? We are giving you 400 million. After realizing that I got 100 million from Bank A. And Bank A, if you add my principal sum and the interest, I'm supposed to pay 1.3 billion. You get it? So they will tell me we are giving you 3 billion. But the 1.3, we are paying it to Bank A. They first clear the interest of Bank A so that now they rank in first priority. Because you can't beat this law. You can't. That's what they say. Some people say buying all. No. That yes, that's yeah. what the standard banks do. They can't tell it's stacking, but it is stacking. Buying right. off. Where bank A buys off your loan from bank B. Okay, it happens in practice. After giving you this loan, they pass clear this one with all the interest to zero balance. Yes. Yes. Mm. That, that's how told you. Okay. In practice. Okay, because when you look at uh, the, you guys' workshop is now, you have to have titles on that show. When you look at the encumbrance page, it has first charge, second charge, first charge, subsequent charge, so that you interpret the law of parking from the top what is supposed to be done. But you are not. So when you meet in Oros, 
they will back you. But in all of the you know that first educator not backing. They'll just give you the title, they open the encounter page. Okay. So when you look at as, okay, as child, second child, father child, just you know, this is tracking indirectly. But they will never tell you that's right now that, that means chances are high. They may give you that in your eye. You interpret it from there. But it had because if you look at all the previous case, that was the model set. Okay. So make use of that. So tracking basically is acquiring another mortgage using the same, the same title. Okay. From a different institution. I've ever done that transaction in practice, but it had a lot of problems. Okay. Sequence you get from that verb. You said Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm. Because of the word mortgage. Yes. Mm. 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 Uh -huh. mm. Mm. Subject to this section, mm -hmm. make the provision mm -hmm. of the to give father advice. Uh -huh. That's why you say we are talking about father child. Indeed. So it happens basically in two circumstances. Where you see father charge, it is within the same bar. Okay? Yes. But they will show you subsequent because subsequent comes after you get it. So when you see things on the type, just know. Sub when they use the word subsequent, it was from another bank. Yes. But further within the same bank. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yes. So that means I will I, I in first place have the priority, then the second and one then I have to come back. I can't use it because I'm they got a loan in my bank. So that's I will use this one of no. No, you follow one, two, three. And if I'm in, because when you read section nine, it refers it to the to the to the act. Not so. Okay. Okay. What happens, okay? If I'm bank A, you bank B, which is bank C. Then Alpha gets a loan from bank A, okay? And then Beta, using the same title, she gets a loan from bank B. Later, she gets a loan from bank C. Then she comes back to bank A. Bank A has the right to start its obligations according to the priority. If I, in the first place, I will first get, then you get, then she gets, then I get the second time. Okay? But I cannot say that I'm number one because of the fact that she came back and you joined them at once. That is not allowed. Is not the talking Okay? Ah, there's that Joining, basically, what, what, happened, what happens in practice? Because they don't want to beat section 
the priority, they buy off your interest. Now, you're the second man. You first clear me. Jive, what cigarette? What about you? Just clear you at cigarette. That's how they do it. Yes, that's what they do. Yes. So, now, we have actually two. Okay. We have okay. What's the first and distinction between workshop and workshop? Do you realize that workshop is a bit chattels? Yes. So what they want to be different under what circumstances? How do you have security in chattels? Because so cast waters. Pain, things, not so. So you ask your soul, okay? Workshop, you have to draw a distinction between under what transactions fall under the Mortgage Act and under what circumstances do people use perfection under other laws? That was the first distinction. So you guys have made work. Have you read about? Previously, we have not known as the Charter Securities Act, but that act was repealed and replaced by which law? The interest in movable properties. Uh -huh. The interest in movable. You had a workshop when it has properties that are movable and you proceeded under the Mortgage Act. Okay? Workshop is clear. It has assets that are movable. We know that, but ah, uh, uh. let me proceed down at the mortgage act. To be honest, you ready the facts, this gentleman? Okay, you get it. So whenever you're dealing with the workshop, firstly the distinction between the two workshops. Okay, between the two. Workshops first place because at the end of the day you apply the law where it does not apply. Okay, I know you've been looking for that. How should we ask this? How should we answer this? Okay, so when you look at uh, the facts, okay, of part A, I'm going to just go through the facts. Okay, it says that uh, Kayula Emmanuel Jane Mary, okay. And Peter's Tayola are registered proprietors of land comprised in FRZ that that located in the still suburb of Kololo in Kampala. Okay, what does that mean? In the first place, which type of ownership is that? We have what we call joint tenants and tenants in common. So, which, what, what, which is this? So what does this that mean? These are all, they can all be more what? If they are mortgaging, okay? Don't you think they need consent from all? That's the first thing you ask yourself, okay? Then you proceed, okay? Olya Emmanuel approached First Line Limited to borrow the sum of Uganda shillings that for his business, JDP Importers and Exporters Limited. The bank duly lent him the money at an interest of 17.8 per annum and dispersed the money onto account of JBD Importers and Exporters Limited. Now, first, as from that, okay, he approached the bank, okay. He used the which security in the first place? Yes? He used the which security? Yes? He used the which security? Let's go on. Okay? So first ask yourself, who, who borrowed the money? Was it Kayola in his personal capacity or in the capacity of a bank? Because you can't answer facts you've not analyzed. Okay? That's why this part was confusing. You ask counsel for the week. Okay? 
That's why facts are confusing. You didn't take time to read them. Okay? So they are telling you here that money was dispersed on which account? Uh, who approached the bank? So now, ask yourself, who is wrong? We go on, okay? The bank secured its interest in the property by way of a mortgage signed by Kayola Emmanuel, Jane Mary, and Peter's Kayola as in the jazz. So what does that mean? Okay? The bank gave a loan to the company, but on security of some other. So it was a third party mortgage. Okay? So who signed the, okay? So that means that both the three, who are the owners of land, the mortgage is in favor of the company. Okay? We go on. Okay? All documentations was signed in March 2021 and securities perfected by the bank. Additionally, the bank also secured its interests by way of assignment of proceeds of the contract between JBD importers and exporters limited and UNHCR worth it that much. What does that mean? They have two modes of enforcement. They have registered a mortgage and then they have assigned their proceeds. That means probably they have a receiver who is going to receive the proceeds from this contract. So they are having two modes of enforcement. Okay? They have the security, the title, and then they also assign themselves the proceeds. So do you have any problem with that? We've not yet seen where the problem is. Two, ever since he took the money, he defaulted on payments with the first bank, with the first installment falling due on the 1st of June, 2021. The principal and the interest outstanding has since been that. His relationship, his relationship manager has tried on several occasions, tried to reach out to him, but to no avail. Okay? What does that mean? He has defaulted. Okay? But ask yourself, has he received the notices under Section 19? Has he received them? Because they are telling you that his manager, the relations manager, the loan officer, has failed to contact him. You get it now. Okay? Let's proceed. Okay? The said loan was guaranteed by Emmanuel, Collier's friend, Sandeep, Rajiv, Noor. Advised the bank on all its options in the circumstances. So what does that mean? There is a default. What are the available options of, of the bank on default? Exercising remedies under section. So you have to discuss the remedies under section 20. But can you go to the remedies before you issue notices? So you have to first discuss the issue of notices and then proceed to the remedies under section 20. Okay? Yes? Council, I've told you all options, all options, okay? All options, okay? Then, procedures to follow, procedures to follow to realize the security of a mortgage given by Emmanuel Collier above, okay? These guys have two securities. You get it. They have vacant land and then proceeds from the contract. So what are the most appropriate modes of enforcement in such circumstances? Do you know what is said? Where there is money, what do we do? We appoint a receiver. Then we have vacant land. What do we do? It's a sale. So that means on two, you're supposed to discuss procedure of a sale 
and the procedure of appointing a dog, a receiver. Okay? Simple. Una want to move so Okay? Then they are saying that uh, assume Sandeep Rajiv Nur repaid the loan taken out by Chora in full to avoid exposure to multi million dollar projects in the Albert Nye oil region. Okay, with oil exploitation companies, advise Sandeep on his rights against Emmanuel. You know, as we call the right to, it is under the Contracts Act. Okay, what are the rights of the guarantor? They are testing rights of a guarantor. What are the rights of the guarantor? Yes, has the right to be indemnified. That's the right they wanted to discuss. Here. So, did you read about the contracts act? <laughs> okay, so now you get it. Okay, then the right in the security given to the bank. Now, you, you check his rights against, okay? So the right in the security given. So remember, we said he has a gain in that property. So what, what does that mean? He becomes the lawful owner of that property upon payment. So what does that mean? When the bank is giving out what we call the release of a mortgage, it is given to him in the names of Rajiv, not in the names of Kolya. You get it? Because Kolya defaulted and the bank proceeded against Rajiv and Rajiv paid. Because of the lien he acquires in the property, he becomes the rightful owner. And therefore, the bank has to release the property in his favor. Okay? Part B. Hey. Okay, look at section 68. If we start from section 65 up down, okay? Part B. Further to the facts in A. Now, remember in A, you talked about the sale, the intending sale. So that means they're referring to your intending sale. Okay? So, further, in fact, in A above, assume Sandeep Rajiv Noor was hard pressed for finances to clear his obligations to Housing Finance Bank. Luckily for him, he is an avid collector of historical artifacts and gas. Underline art, art crafts and gas. Which type of part is that? Those are chattels. Are they movable immovable? So now, close your eyes with the Mortgage Act automatically because the Mortgage Act deals with immovable properties. So ask yourself, as per this part, which law? Then that's when you go to what we call the Security Interest in Movable Properties Act. Okay? You know. As an act that then will be severe. Okay? This act is old. That act is old. Okay? Those are inherited laws. <laughs> so, the law is known as the Security Interest in Movable Properties Act of 2019. Okay? Yes, that's the law. Why? You look at the, the facts are pointing at movable properties. So for you proceed under the mortgage act, which deals with immovable. Okay? You didn't read up the capital of the mortgage act. I'm very sure no one read past part of the mortgage act. That's why people have been fighting with this part. Okay? Because you don't want to read. Okay? Then they're saying that um In his collection are uh, Atrick Axton Martins, 
and Rolls Royce cars, including the one once driven by Queen Elizabeth II. He also has expensive art collections, some, that, some dating back as far as 300 years. He approached his closest friend, Mr. Hattison McKay, a wealthy Ugandan businessman of Irish origin, who is a collector of artifacts and knows their true value. Mr. McKay agreed to lend Sandeep all the funds he needed to be able to discharge his obligations to First Line Bank Limited. This was on the condition that Sandeep deposit some of the articles and paintings with Mr. Mackey as security to secure payment of the money lent. So what does that mean? This guy gave him security of movable. Of movable. So when you look at that act, just where we say perfection of securities in movable properties. That's how you answer this question. Okay, perfection of a security in movable properties. That's actually not Okay. Ah, that's the Okay. You go to section 12 of best card, okay? But then it answers this, okay? Then part C, okay? But she says, further to the facts in A, what are they talking about? The impending sale as well. Okay? Further in facts in A above, it has come to attention that Mr. Paul C. Mukuru, okay, Kolya, son of Isaiah Kolya, the property mentioned in part A was mortgage to First Line Bank Limited. Okay? The property was a matrimonial home of Paul Sinimukuru Kolya's late father, Kolya Isaiah, who passed away in January 2021. Kolya Isaiah used this property as one of his matrimonial homes, where he raised, where he resided with his wife, Jane Mary Kolya, and his six children. The property was at all times registered in the names of Kolya Isaiah. Okay. Then Paul C is the executor of the will of Isaiah Kolya. When Paul C conducted a search in the company register, he established that the intended property was mortgaged to First Line Bank Limited at a sum of that was dispersed to JB Importers Limited. He also saw the land transfer form dated December 10th, which was allegedly signed by his late father into the names of Kira Emmanuel, Jane Mary, and Peter Scolia. This came as a surprise to him because at this time, his late father was in intensive care unit at St. Mary Hospital, London. He could not neither talk nor write or comprehend anything. Father, to the best of his knowledge, Cora Mary and had not visited their father in the hospital from the time he was admitted until he passed home. He submitted the transfer form and other documents with the authentic signatures of his late father to police. Forensic report was of handwriting. Expert established that the two signatures varied significantly and it could not have been authorized by, authored by the same person, okay? He summoned the family meeting and it marked that the transfers were probably stretched by those guys. When quizzed, they all denied wrongdoing. Hey, whether this guy has a cause of action, okay? What procedure can he follow to stop? Never put an answer. They gave him the answer to stop the impending. So that means it's an application to stop it to sell under regulation 13 of the mortgage regulations. So you cancel for the week. That's the remedy you're going for. Okay? Institute and main suit, the, the thing is by notes of motion, supported by an affidavit. Simple as that. And you said about this act. 
Okay. Then lastly, they are talking about sell and court order. He also okay. It is stoppage. Okay. Look at two thirteen. What's the okay? Yes. Yes. Also. Does the law provide how it was? But you, but when you look at that, it talks about a temporary. It has an injunction. You instant. Just read the rule. Very very polar. Don't panic. Polar. Okay. Polar. It has stoppage and that means you are going for stoppage. You know so. Polar. Read. You will differentiate how we proceed under adjournment and how we proceed under stoppage. So first we do that provision. Very well. That's where the mood is emanating from. Okay. So now, what is said in action? Okay. So everything is simple and everything is passive. Okay. Sell and the court order is also under the mortgage regulations. Okay. But I read this. Your orals. This topic is contributing 40%, whether you like it or not. It takes it all. So take your time before the week ends. You punch all the mistakes you have seen and you are still seeing. Hey, unconditional. Can he? What the, what are they asking? This read regulation thirteen. It says any person, any person, they are testing whether he has locus, and does he have the survival grounds? The ground is look at regulation thirteen. It mentions grounds. That's what they wanted to discuss whether he has grounds. Okay, because that application is on grounds of fraud or any other justifiable cause. He's an administrator. Okay. Of that estate, yes. Okay, we have two applications in there. Okay, but that law doesn't tell you how we bring that application, not so. So now you first take your time. To read. Okay, first take your time to read. Yes. Yes. The appropriate answer is the summary is in one. The money. They know it is not so. It is a that is it. That's why they are telling you. Because there is an argument that it is not so. That's because when we read all the time, the order is there. The circumstances under it, where it is a certain sum of money to go, we go contract. You have a loan out of the contract. So the most appropriate under this is for the taxes. You know what? Money should be in circulation. There is no half of the market system for expeditious disposal. Let us proceed against you. We get judgment in default because you have no defense to us. You give us money. We are working. You want to, because if you never ask an advocate, you have a little other regulation too. Make a mistake. You don't advise the clients very well. We shall see with who. Okay? So. Guys, let us bring this session to an end. May God bless you. Okay. 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 Okay.